your life. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Tipton and Hearst. Christina's not here. Emma's gonna help me today. She's <laughs> nervous, she's scared. We're gonna get through it together, right? So can everybody hear me okay? We're using my phone instead of Christina's phone, so we don't know if my phone works, if it's her phone, but hopefully everyone's all right. Are we getting any, any responses at all, Emma? Anybody yes, watching? Yes, we're getting some likes and hearts. Okay, great. Linda's watching. Oh, awesome. So today I thought we would do something really summary, really easy, low maintenance, dough bowl, as we call them in the South, some green apples, some granny green apples. I'm gonna take these and set them off to the side. And what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna take these up, and hopefully none of them will hit the ground before it's over with, which that'll be a feed in itself. And we're gonna make an arrangement inside the dough bowl. I'm not gonna use foam today, I'm gonna to use a glass vase. Uh, I know these are gonna to jump to their death. But that's okay. So who all's watching today, Emma? Rebecca, Miss Peggy's on here. Hey, Miss Peggy. Christina joined us today. Hey, Christina. How was the bridal lo bridesmaids luncheon? Hopefully fun. So this is an oblong container. This comes from UCI. You can get them pretty much anywhere. And what I wanted to do is because I'm using more fragile flowers that are, are, are well, almost like wildflowers, basically, they're gonna, they don't do as well in foam. So we want something to be a little bit more long lasting. So today we're gonna always go back and use a little bit of fresh mint out of the garden. We're gonna use some solidago or commonly called goldenrod that you get along the side of the road or roadside of you. We're gonna use some Veronica. We have fresh zinnias from Arkansas. These were grown in Conway. Those are beautiful. Yeah, aren't they pretty? Love all these colors. So Liz Claiborne. So then a little bit of yarrow. I'm going to try today not to knock the yarrow on the ground. <laughs> It'll be another feat. <laughs> then we're going to fill in with some focal flowers of the yellow and the orange Gerber daisies. A little bit of green pit, a little bit of bunny tail, and a little bit of fern. So how we'll start this is I've already centered it here. We're just going to go back and put a little bit, make a, a slight bit of an, what I would consider an armature to insert the flowers into. Uh, people always ask, do you tape them? I really don't use tape. I used to do that, but I guess I'm too old and lazy now to worry with it. My tape never held. It always fell off So when I was doing it. So I'm trying not to put very much foliage in the bottom of the vase, but at least this should hopefully be a kind of a catch once we start. And I also want to make sure that the, that the foliage kind of angles over the edge. So that when we start inserting the apples around, it looked like the apples, that the zinnias are just kind of growing out of the apples. So anyway, so how are we doing over there? Anybody have any questions? No, no questions. The colors. Okay. Yeah. There, Christina we've got, must just make those questions up. <laughs> <laughs> we've got people from all over watching, though. Oh, cool. I think, Christina, are you making these questions up? They're really not asking these questions, are they? <laughs> so, now we're going to go back with a little bit of our solidago, or we commonly call it goldenrod. And this is just going to be a good filler. Once again, we're just trying to get some structure here, so we start adding the zinnias and the other flowers that they'll, hold, they'll stand up better for us. Okay, I add one more of those because I only got one more. <laughs> Let me twist that around to there. Okay, so now let's go back and add our mint. The mint there. smells wonderful. So good. Love fresh mint, right? A little bit of that into there. So no, no rhyme or reason. Very, ha very whimsical, kind of haphazard. Go back and start adding these. You know what? Let's go and add some Gerber daisies first. Christina so, says that the people ask when she's on here. <laughs> <laughs> of course they do, Christina. So anyway, we're going to go back and add this. Here we go. We have a question. Okay, now. awesome. They want to know how you measure the length um, of the flowers when you insert them. How do I measure the length? I'm actually just watching the size of the container. And also I'm kind of watching where I want to insert the proportion of the stem to. Does that make sense at all? Meaning on this container, I know I need to go about one and a half times higher to make it look proportional. I'm also having to counteract to look at the size of the, of the way this container hits the bottom of the ground of the, of the Lazy Susan. So I want to do at least one and a half 
And if not, if I don't do one and a half times up, I want to do one and a half times out. Does that make sense? Not yes. sort of, kind of, really? Okay. It did to me. You get to, okay. But I have gotten some requests to let everyone know who's watching. Okay. So okay. Okay. We've got people from Canada, Belfast, Tokyo, Japan. Oh my goodness. I mean, they're all over. Oh my goodness. We've got people in Arkansas, North Carolina. We're so New glad Orleans. you're all over this. So we've decided we're going to come up with a name for everybody. We're going to call ourselves the Happies because it's happy with Chris. So we're going to call everybody that watches, you're a happy or happiest or happier. But I'm, we're going to call ourselves the Happies. Do you all like that? Be part of the happy family? <laughs> One big happy family. One big happy family. So as you see, I'm going back randomly and kind of dispersing my color through. here no rhyme or reason because we don't want it to look fixed we want it to look like it just came right out of the garden okay there's that now I'm gonna go back and add some yarrow because the yarrow is gonna give me more weight it'll help hold this up there a little bit better oops I am spinning any other questions out there not no, not, not so much. Miss Alice, is she on out there yet? Alice, Miss Alice from Alabama. I have been looking. I haven't seen. Uh, I don't think. Okay. So there's that. So let's keep going to here. Oh, found two more pieces of mint. Yay. And now I'm going to add a little bit of fern. Now on the fern, I am going to kind of clump it together. Another one of those really big terms I have, clumping. <laughs> it makes it so it looks like almost like it's a little miniature group of fern. And that way it doesn't look like wings so much going out as far as having a little bit more presence there. They love being a part of the happy family, oh, by the way. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, here she is. Miss Alice is Ms. on. Miss Alice is on. Okay, we're getting worried about you. <laughs> and Miss Susan, I see oh, she's on here. Great. Oh, she said we're, someone said we're almost at 480 watching. Oh, awesome. Yeah. They're wanting to know what the highest has been. The highest has been 900, 916. That was last Monday. And when Christina quit talking at one point, that's because she was hyperventilating because she goes, oh my gosh, oh my God. <laughs> she goes, there was a 916 people watching at one time. Yeah. Okay, we have another flower question. Okay, great. Do people ever complain about the fresh flowers bothering their allergies? Is oh, there a flower constantly. that is less likely to cause allergies to act up? Well, there's actually less flowers now that cause allergies because they've depollinated in the fact that they don't have a high pollen concentration. The flowers that cause most problems for people are going to be your lilies because of the aroma they can't take. It gives them headaches. Like my daughter cannot be in the same room with either a stargazer or a... Um, Casablanca lily. So, oops. So with that mean, well, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna spin and twirl while I insert the flowers. <laughs> a hit, talking about a hit or a miss here. We gonna really have it going on. So now I'm adding my zinnias. I'm just gonna disperse the color all the way around. And they're also asking why you don't wire your Gerbers. Well, I do sometimes wire them, but in this instance, I kind of want them to be a little bit more. A wacky doodle as I would say just very um, free-flowing mm -hmm. and so we could go back and wire them especially on party work we probably would but just in the home I mean just randomly let them let them do their own thing a little bit so if they are too far out just like that one I would go back and insert it more into here for depth into the middle but I think I can cover a lot of that up with all these really pretty zinnias. Kind of wanted the zinnias to be the main thing today because we just started to get those in. So we're trying to play with those. Like I said, they come up, oh, there's a broken head. We're gonna use that in a minute. 
And actually, I'm up oh, there another broken head. <laughs> <laughs> One after another. Well, that's why I don't get too worked up about it. It just you just go with it, right? Mm-hmm. So, are you cutting the stems a specific we, way? We always we always cut a long cut, meaning I angle my knife down, and that makes a longer cut. It's not a straight cut; it's a long cut on the stems. I've got two more bunches. Any more questions out there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, what kind of knife are you using? Hit me, Mel. Uh, it's just a paring knife. It's a little inexpensive, what I call throwaway knife, because I am the world's worst about losing knives on the design room. So instead of me investing in a really great, like a Swiss knife or whatever, we just do these paring knives because if I can get a good week out of them, I've done really well. So, so now I'm going back and I'm kind of doing little groups of the zinnias. But I did, definitely did wanted to keep these in water today because they're going to last so much better than if I put them in foam. The oasis. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. So one more bunch. Which flower is going to last the longest out of these? Uh, probably, well, the yarrow definitely will last the longest. The green wreaths will last the longest. The yarrow will actually dry. Um, it'll be a, the Gerbers probably will last longer than the zinnias. Sometimes, depending on, I don't know, sometimes it depends on the zinnias. Sometimes zinnias will last a really long time, but just as soon as I say that, they'll be gone in a couple of days. These should hold up better because they're acclimated, because they've been grown out in the yard. Mm -hmm. where um, the ones we would commercially buy from California would actually have to be on a refrigerated truck. And sometimes the refrigeration kind of gets to the warm flower, these flowers that are more of a summer flower. They don't seem to hold near as well sometimes. So, They're loving the color combo. I'm digging the colors too. <laughs> Miss Christina, what do you think? I know you're watching. <laughs> So. Um, just to recap, because everyone's kind of asking again, the flowers are just in water this time, right? so they last longer. They last longer, exactly. Flowers are always going to hold up better when they're in water than in foam. That's just the nature. It's always better to have good, clean water with your flowers. Well, that one kind of got sad on me right there. And to add a little bit more whimsy to it, I'm going to go back and add just a few of these bony tails through it. <laughs> we approve? Yes. We're doing all right? Okay. Christina says it's beautiful. Oh, good. There we go. Let me add a few more here on this side. So it looks like you just went out in the yard and by the ditch and picked up some stuff and so it's really easy and very um my favorite word garden-esque so last but not least on this design i was going to say something really simple and quick after this i know you're probably getting bored so now i'm going to go back and just take fresh apples and we're just going to line those around the edge and this will cover up the mechanics except for that one to get in the water there. Uh, put one more there. How much would you charge for this arrangement? I would have to stop and add it up. Up. Oh, uh -oh. one jumped. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad this apple. This one it's a bad oh, oh, bad apple. <laughs> You got a mini. Oh, that's a good one. A bad apple. Anyway, let me. See. Yep. So um, I would have to add it up. It just really is four bunches of four bunches of zinnias that you could get locally at a farmer's market or if you grow them yourself. And I think there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend this anymore. What's well, the ones on the oh. top? Oh. <laughs> Definitely be the one you got to put on place when you get there. Uh, so let's see. I lost my count. We'll come back to it later. So anyway, you get the gist of it. We're just going to take these green apples that aren't jumping to their death 
and put them around the edge. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought we could do, something really simple to do, man, anyway, is to take just a box of apples, just like this. Of course, you would want to take the stickers off, right? So your box of apples, and then you would put them in here. <laughs> There's a bunch down there. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. Fill it with water because this has a liner in it. Then a really fun and easy thing to do is you just want to go back and just take one, two, and you're just going to insert that in just like we did with the grapes the other day and just start inserting a couple flowers so it's more like a pave look. And that's definitely where you would take these broken heads as you were designing and pop those in there so nothing goes to waste and you get to enjoy the flowers that didn't make it into the arrangement. So there's that. Here we go. You get one more. I'm going to do a couple orange ones. That'd be all right. So, oh, and the yarrow would be so easy too. Put that back in there. Okay. Yarrow's so good because it dries so much easier. And it doesn't wilt either the way that most stuff does. Even if it doesn't have a good water source, it's going to kind of dry on you. So just want to show you how you ta easily take these broken heads and still enjoy them by using them with fresh apples. Oh, I need a little bit more purple over here, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Oh, let me get that one. So, with that being said, I think we're done for today. I got to pick a bunch of apples up now. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for joining us today for our happy. I'm glad you're part of the happy family, and we will. And y'all have a blessed night, and I hope everyone's doing all right. It's raining here in Little Rock, and we're getting ready to. I got to leave now to go do a rehearsal dinner. So anyway. Um, Y'all be safe, and Christina, have a good time tonight at the party. All right, we'll see you.